The planning stage. In a household, family members regularly plan their expenses for efficient spending, and of course, to ensure that their needs are adequately addressed. In a country, this process is undertaken by the national government yearly, and at the local level, at more regular intervals. The planning stage involves the identification of priorities, strategies, policies, and programs. Those involved in the planning stage must make sure that these reflect what the whole country needs. For citizens, the planning stage of the PFM cycle should answer questions like, what is my government's priority for development? What projects and policies can we expect in the future? Which sectors are being prioritized this year and why? However, not everyone can directly participate in the planning process. Only government officials can craft plans which will eventually be implemented on the ground. Because of this, there may be certain instances wherein plans might reflect only the interests of the few. Or, the plans may reflect the interests of many people but not be in line with their priorities. Participatory planning is becoming an increasingly effective way to mitigate these vulnerabilities. Participatory planning allows stakeholders to directly engage with officials in identifying priorities for spending. In Naga City, Philippines, participatory development planning was institutionalized at the city level. Citizens of Naga were able to directly influence development planning through regular meetings with the city government. Through the formation of the Naga City People's Council, various sectoral representatives come together and are able to push for various interests in a peaceful, legal, and productive venue. This initiative was made possible primarily through a government champion. The former mayor who spearheaded the reform legalized the formation of the People's Council. This made the People's Council sustainable and the city government, whoever gets elected, accountable. <laughs>